the International Space Station. He showed them footage of that, and the guy said it was fake, fake footage. But my question is, what would be the motive of the government faking this for a 70, 80 years? I don't understand what's their motive behind that. Well, I'm trying to figure out all these satellites are up there, okay? If the Earth is <laughs> flat, how do they go around the Earth? I mean, you know, what's the point? I mean, the Earth is flat. Does that mean everybody's walking upside down in Australia and China and Japan? Oh, my God. I never thought, well, they could fall off. But right. And it, it, here's some science behind this stuff. You know, the nor northern hemisphere, the water goes down the drain clockwise. Southern hemisphere goes counterclockwise. Uh, that's because of the curvature of the Earth and the rotation of it, not because it's flat and it doesn't move. Oh, no. You've just been told that. It's a lie. <laughs> The military and the government wants you to believe that. The water goes down the same way, straight down. If you say so, sir. Well, yeah, well, I'm just saying what he said. That's why left-handers have bigger curveballs in the northern hemisphere. Right-handers do in the southern hemisphere. And that's, uh, this is science. This is science you can look up. You can actually do it. You might have to you know, do a little traveling to do it, but you can prove it. And you can't do that if it was flat earth. But I just don't understand the motive of faking all this uh, from the government for, I don't know, what, 70 years? More than that. And on top of it, think about this, okay? We have the sun rises and the sun sets and we go for our dark stage, you know, for so many hours. And then the sun rises, okay? Well, in this case, evidently, somebody with a rope is, you know, turning this light off and on and bringing it up and down. Because you know what, if the Earth is flat, then then the sun cycle the cycles we have wouldn't work. You see, in no way would we have, you know, a morning, afternoon, and nighttime because it wouldn't matter, would it? Everything would be lit no. up the same. Right, and then what about the uh, aurora borealis and other things like that? The the uh, all the stars you're seeing going across the sky at you know during the night i guess it's all set up i don't know it's just weird <laughs> so in other words weird. if you want to be a guest on my show and talk about flat earth i want something more than saying that we're in a warehouse okay i want more than something that the the, the sun and the stars are basically up on the ceiling way up there and, and reflecting down on us. And everything is basically assimilated on a... If you want to say that, why don't you just come out and say, we're living in the metrics and nothing is real. Okay? Then you can say whatever you want to say. But he didn't want to really say that either. So there it is. I, I'm not knocking the guy. I mean, he has right to his own views. I was very polite to him on this show. But you know what I say? I don't believe him. <laughs> Well, well, you know, if we didn't go to the moon in 69 that, and our Apollo went way up there, where did it go? Did, because supposedly it's only 20,000 miles up that the ceiling is. So, you know, I, I can don't tell know. you they, where it went. It went into the warehouse. Oh, and then it came to... out of the warehouse. I don't know. I, I, am I a scientist, James? <laughs> I'm just a I talk show were. host. I'm not. But I tell oh. you what, with my third grade education, I can realize the Earth maybe is not totally round, but it is definitely, definitely not flat like my first wife. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think also if it was flat, we'd have a trouble staying attached to the surface. We might just float away or fall off, too. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not a scientist. Well, put it this way. What happens if the earth quits spinning? Are you going to be right. able to walk out of your house? Or are you going to kind of like float off to never, never land? Are we going to lose <laughs> our atmosphere? Because if the earth stops spinning, what that, you know what? That's what keeps you our gravity. That's what keeps you planted Inertia. on this earth. So if the earth really started to, for some reason, speed up, which it's not, it's actually slowing down. You know, eventually, you know, like 10,000 years from now, 50,000 years from now, the Earth is going to slowly, slowly be slower than it is now. So, you know what? You can, you know, the gravity won't be anywhere near what it is. But it, it, on a flat Earth, how can they even make gravity? Because it, it, it's not, how can you take a, 
a flat thing, okay, and spin it. I guess you could spin it like a 78 RPM record, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah, I guess you could spin it like that. But even even if you did that, Gary, it's like having the Ferris wheel effect. In other words, whoever's on the farthest end of that record, you're really going to be going fast and getting dizzy. Whoever's toward the middle, it'd be like you're not hardly moving. No, you no, you're wrong. You, I know oh. for a fact what happens. When I was like about 10 years old, I had my record player. I was so proud of it. And my mom had a whole bunch of 78 records, which, you know, they didn't want me to play, you know, the modern music. So, hey, listen to these 78 records. I found a cure what I could do with that record player. I had army men, you know, those little plastic army men we all had when we were kids. I would put them on the record player on a 78 record. And I would turn the player on at 78 uh, RPM and they went flying off. And my my big thing is to see how far they could fly. There's there's your answer. What would happen? Yeah. If you're not holding on to the, the, to the uh, bar, when you're going around, you're going to go flying. You're going to be dizzy too. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of dizzy people on this earth. Yeah. (laughs) And what would keep it from breaking? Because it wouldn't support itself. The earth is round. Being round, it can handle all the pressures and all this stuff. If it was flat, it could just break up and crunch and go away. Well, another thing is called weight distribution, because surely some parts of the flat earth is going to have way too much weight in a certain area, and that's going to make it work or off balance or something, I would think, unless we have some kind of foundation into something. I mean, how does that work? You know, this is crazy thoughts. Well, put it this way. We're countries where they have a lot of uh, obese people. If you turn the flat earth on the opposite side, you'll find a new mountain growing. Oh, uh, you know what? That reminds me of when I was in grade school, a teacher used to tell us if everybody in China stood up and jumped at the same time, they would cause earthquakes and stuff on this side in America. I used to thought that was crazy. You mean that's not true? I don't know. Well, I guess not if we're flat earth because they're not really underneath us. They're just over there. I uh, yeah, I have no idea. They, well, they could be they could be underneath us, and then they're just because it's spinning. Of course, it would it throw them off. I have no idea. Okay, I come to a new conclusion: the Earth isn't round. It isn't flat. It isn't like a pancake. It is shaped like a pineapple. A <laughs> pineapple. Yeah. So, so what happens to me, you know, I'm going to write a book around. on that. You know that I'm going to say, I'm going to get a whole group of people going. I'll, I'll create a group on Facebook. The earth is not flat. It's not round. It is shaped like a pineapple. And then you could have a disclosure book on how you came to that. <laughs> yeah. One night I was drinking a lot of beers and I, and I, my wife was, you know, getting ready to cut a pineapple pineapple. And uh, I came to that, that. That could be the Earth. There, <laughs> there it like is. I'll write a book about your... it. I'll write a book and I'll sell it for nineteen ninety five. There you go. Uh, you're you're off to the right. You're on the right track. I can feel it. Okay. Well, big shout out to Barb who's listening. I, I again, in about another week or so, the website will have chat, so you'll be able to go on to it and chat with us and not have to worry about trying to log into. Uh, you know, uh, this app, because a lot of people are telling me they, they can't get on it. They, they no, just can't. They even, I still can't get on my phone. Laptop once in a while still won't accept my password, and sometimes it will. So it's weird. I don't know. It's, it's, it's confusing. It's not confusing. It's just contrary. Yeah. So you think an asteroid is going to hit this weekend? If it does, I can tell you where I like to see it hit. No, I don't think it's going to hit. I, I don't. I just don't. I don't feel it. Okay. Well, just think about it. You know, even like they talk about the extinction of a, a asteroid hitting Earth and taking out, you know, the dinosaurs and all that stuff back when, you know, before the wagon wheel. Uh-huh. Maybe an asteroid didn't hit the Earth. Maybe it flew by close enough and it, it sucked out some of the atmosphere. It roasted some of the dinosaurs and froze the others. 
Very plausible. I, you know, the thing that really scares me, Gary, is not a big asteroid hitting us, but one big enough that if it hits somewhere like uh, where the super volcano is and then it activates that, that's scary. To me, more scary and more plausible than than they, one huge big one hitting us because you don't have to have a huge big one with the kinetic energy they have. Maybe want to come in that, you know, would cause a little damage, but if it hit, you know, in out there in the Dakotas, where the super volcano is, or, or wherever it is, and it activated Yellow, that. Yellowstone. As, as Yellowstone. Yeah. And, yeah, and, Yellowstone. Yeah, and I can tell you about two years ago, uh, somebody I knew went with their family to fo- take photographs at Yellowstone, and he went into an area which they actually were closing off, and they told him he had to move. And what he noticed when he got back to the hotel after their daily trip, he took his shoes off and he noticed his shoes. The bottom of it was actually melted. Oh, wow. That tells you how hot the ground was getting. And that's why they were closing certain areas. And they are all constantly closing more and more areas of Yellowstone because, you know, it's expanding the heat. What's going on? It's, it's scary. And, you know, the, another deadly killer is gases that you can't smell. And they could kill, uh, they could kill thousands because a lot of that gun gases are, is heavier than oxygen, so it hangs close to the earth. I mean, there's a perfect case that happened in Africa just three, four years ago. It wiped out a whole village within a 16-mile radius of this volcano of these gases coming up through the ground, and it hung low to the ground. It killed every animal and every person. It's thousands of people in a village overnight. Oh, yeah. I mean, that stuff is toxic, is it? And you're right. And, you know, even Pompeii, with, I've read about when that uh, volcano went and all those people perished, you know, that a lot of them didn't perish from the, actually the eruption part. They, again, the gases killed a lot of people. A lot of them died first from the gases. Yeah, the gases are so toxic. Some of them you can't even smell. Some of them are really rotten. But there, there are some really deadly toxic things. And not only that, the ash, some of that ash is deadly. You breathe it, you're, it fills your lungs up and you're dead. It suffocates you. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't take long. But, you know, that's, no. that we, you know what? We've been living on this planet for how long? And think about well, it. Well, yeah. You know, right. it, it's just something we have no, we, we can't con- have no control. We have absolutely no control. It's like no. somebody was saying, well, you know what? We could shoot down these asteroids, nuke them. But you ever think about you hit a big asteroid, right? And now you have all these little pieces coming down. That's like taking a, a, a shotgun, right? And putting four people in front of it and pulling the trigger. I mean, what's yeah. going to happen is if they tried to take out a big asteroid with hits and stuff like that, instead of having one big hit, you're going to have thousands and thousands of hits coming down. And that could be even worse. Anyway, we're going to go on break. We'll be back with uh, James doing the news. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio. See you 